Baraka. Hello and welcome to Clarkie's Corner, our weekly podcast talking about the Swire shipping Fiji and Andrua and chatting about the Shop and Save Super Rugby Pacific competition. I'm and joining me today are two very passionate rugby men, FBC News Director Indra Singh. Bula Indra. Bula Clarkie. Nice to have you on board. You. And also joining me is a man who I first met when he was working in media at the Melbourne Rebels, and he moved on to RUPA, the Rugby Union Players Association, and now he's at the Queensland Reds, we won't hold that against him, as head of commercial, Bullet Pete Fairburn. Bullet Clarkie, thanks for having me on the show. Great to see you, mate. Last Sunday, Brisbane turned on the heat for the Drua when they took on the Reds at Suncorp Stadium. It was similar to last year, wasn't it? Not a lot separated them at the end. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I, I think when you're hosting the Fiji Drua, you'd probably like it to be, you know, 15 degrees and cold, and and use the uh, the climate as a bit of an equaliser. Um, but but it was very much conditions that you know you could have been right at home in in Nandi or, or Singatoka. It was it was steamy, it was hot, and it was played in the afternoon. And while the Reds got out to a you know a, a pretty comprehensive lead at one point, the Drua never backed down and were right in it until the very end. Indra, what did you take out of the performance at Suncorp Stadium by the Fiji and Drua? Um, I think I think uh, the Reds the Reds at one stage were looking like they're going to run away with it, but you know our Drua have shown from last season to uh, this year so far, uh, you can never count them out. Gone are the days of Fijian rugby teams uh, puffing out after sixty. This Drua side is showing us they can play the whole eighty and go the go the uh, whole uh, yard. Unlucky. I think that's what a lot of people are saying. But what a performance by Sefo Masi. I mean, I think he was the talk of the uh, game once again, uh, Clarky. Yeah, he was indeed. We'll come back to uh, some of the star performers. But Indra, just on that point uh, about playing the 80, they are still giving good teams a, a big lead though, aren't they? They can't keep on doing that. Definitely, absolutely correct. And uh, we need the team to be in the game because if, if teams like the, uh, the the big guns we see, once they get a sniff of a big lead, they'll keep on piling on the points and we, we can't have the Drua, um, you know, fall way behind and then try to play catch-up rugby. And I think that's what Mick Burns said. We've got to be into the game from the opening whistle, take our chances, get those points early on. Because as the game breaks, uh, breaks uh, open and lose rugby comes into play, the Drua are dangerous, but with a big scoreline on the scoreboard, uh, it, it, it could become a, uh, you know impossible task to chase it down and get the win that's much required. So that's, uh, I believe, a work on for, uh, for the coaching staff uh, this week heading into the Highlanders game. Full-time, it was 27 to 24 to the Reds, but as uh, the coach Brad Thorne said afterwards, they nearly snatched defeat from the jaws of victory. Great line, that one. We trotted out from time to time, but uh, Petey was pretty much spot on, wasn't he? He was. Um, and look, I've spoken to a number of you know, friends and former colleagues across different clubs in, in both Australia and New Zealand, and nobody's sleeping on the Fiji and Drua this year. Um, you know, everyone's completely aware of um, you know, the wide array of talent within the squad. Um, and to your point, uh, Indra, that, that this is a team that is not going to slip away. Um, you know, they're fitter than they've been before and they're well conditioned. So, um, Nobody's going to be taking them lightly, and and you know on the weekend what you saw was was a draw team who fought until right at the very end, and ironically for the second year in a row and a narrow win for for the Reds, it's a a Reds Fijian player who who comes up with the big play. Um, last year it was it was Seruuru scoring the try, um, yeah, to to win the game for the Reds, and this time, uh, Filippo Dalgunu, um, who, who got the you know integral turnover to win the ball uh, back for the Reds right there at the end, so. Um, I don't know if it's as bittersweet over in Fiji as, as it feels here, perhaps, but um, I, I think what it does do is it sets up, you know, a, a real rivalry between the Reds and the Drua that's only going to going to grow year on year. And the fact that we're heading over there to play you in Fiji again later this year, that's going to be a really spicy contest. Indra, let's pick up on that. Uh, what's the feeling in Fiji now uh, about? Uh, so many great Fijians in opposition teams. We saw Cebu Reese the week before in uh, Latoka. We saw three or four Fijians in in, in the Reds team. Um, it is, isn't it going to be great in the future if we can, in Fiji, hold on to all that talent in the Drua? 
Yeah, Clarky, over the weekend while watching that one against the Reds, someone mentioned to me, imagine if Fiji Rugby and the Drua were able to call on all the talent from around the world. But Anthony, what makes this Drua team special is these are lo mostly local players who've been given a chance, you know, to do, uh, to do what they love doing week in, week out. For example, I know we'll touch on the individuals a bit later on, but uh, players like Masi, who've never even played a provincial competition in Fiji yet, and they've been given a chance in the Drua. Uh, th these players now have a platform, and the Drua is giving them such a great opportunity to strut their stuff. Unfortunately, we'll lose some of them next season um, uh, the, to the bigger, better contracts, I believe, but that's the whole plan, to get these players exposed. But it is a great build-up. It is a great uh, opportunity for us to get our players playing together and form the core of the national flying Fijians team in the future, Clarky. Indeed. Uh, Pete, the Reds, they still really haven't hit their straps, have they? Is that a worry at this stage of the season? Oh, look, I, I think you can be guilty of putting too much stock in, in either a positive or a, um, a middling start. Um, you know, clearly, if you were Norton 4, um, you, know, you, you have the added pressure of are you going to be able to qualify for playoffs and that sort of thing. Fortunately, at, at 2 and 2, our destiny remains very much in our own hands, right? So um, I, I think we've certainly um, been able to, to navigate some, some challenging games with a number of key players injured. Um, it, it was critically important to win that game on, on Sunday um, and then really important to back up again against the Rebels this week in Melbourne to, to move to a 3 and 2 record. Um, I, I think the game against the Brumbies round three, that goes five more minutes. All the momentum is with the Reds and they get the win there. So um, what we have been able to see is, you know, someone like a Liam Wright come back who's who's had a pretty uh, challenging couple of years with injury and have a massive impact in that six jersey and perhaps demonstrate that, that he's the kind of guy that Eddie Jones might be having a look at. Someone like a Josh Fluke in the 13 jersey who, who's been a bit of a revelation um, or, or perhaps for those outside of Queensland, a bit of a revelation because we've known just how good Fluke he is for a couple of years now. And now that he's getting a really good run at it in that 13 jersey, he's demonstrating his capabilities. Tommy Lyon has obviously come in and done a really good job. But if you look at the number of players who are still unavailable for selection, particularly in the type five, um, you know, we think that, that you don't win a championship without um, you know, all of your squad being exposed. And and, and very much the ball's still in our court for the trajectory of our season from here. Uh, we remain really confident and, and think that it's going to be a really exciting season and, and the sky's the limit for the Queensland Reds. Yeah. Talk about one of your Fijians uh, players in the Reds, Suliasi of Vunavalu. Oh, I, I can see that it's, it's, it's almost there, but, gee, it's a frustration, isn't it, because this guy has some talent, but um, we just haven't seen the full package yet. Yeah, and look, Suli's been unlucky with injuries and, and a lack of continuity over the last couple of years because of that. Um, and that's not an excuse. It, it's a reality when you're not able, you know, when you're converting back to a sport you haven't played in a number of years since he was in, in high school. And um, you're trying to get that cohesion and develop relationships and, and uh, partnerships with your teammates. If you're, if you're in and out of the side due to injury, that's naturally going to be harder. I, I think what Suli boasts is a really unique athletic profile. There's nobody in the competition really who, who has his size his aerial ability um and and it was really interesting after our trial match against the waratahs in narrabri eddie jones was down there and one of the things he was saying afterwards which really impressed him about Suli was his communication um and that's not necessarily something we've always come to expect from pacific and from players who, who haven't had continuity in the side right we, we normally think our our key communicators are your key playmakers and they're the guys who've been there for a long time and and therefore have, have almost earned the right to be strong communicators. But to me, that's really encouraging. I, I think it demonstrates that Suliasi feels really comfortable in that back line, that he is communicating so well. And, um, yeah, I, I think that um, when it all falls together for him, uh, Australian rugby and, and Queensland rugby are going to be the beneficiary of, of you know, a pretty unique talent. Well, in the end, uh, Suncorp, the Reds did score four tries to three. Good to see Robovo uh, off the bench and back on the scorer's sheet. Uh, Indra, and also you mentioned Yosefi, uh, Yosefo Marcy. Now, now, Frank Lamani edged ahead of Marcy for the Hoover Man of the Match Award. Um, Marcy was, again, voted fan favourite, so he's clearly uh, making inroads there with the fan base. But um, it's just nice to see two, three, four or five players every week putting their hand up to win that Hoover Player of the Match award. Oh, most definitely, and I think I think that builds that uh, that competition within the players are uh, trying to give it their all. 
then I think Frank Lomani, uh, when he moved out onto the wing, uh, when unfortunately Jeremy Sau had to go off, and then he's kicking. And that's that's been a bit of an Achilles heel for Mick and the, and the team is the kicking. Uh, we've seen those two three pointers that we lose uh, many a times has come back to bite us. You know, with Frank's kicking and uh, with uh, uh, Camu Valentini also in the mix, I, th- I think we're slowly getting there in terms of uh, uh, kicks getting us the points. But again, uh, mix mix lost um, Aroni Sal for this week, so that becomes very interesting when he names his match day squad. But I think there's more than enough talent. And Ravovo and Voters combination, we haven't seen it so far this season. You know, what ignited the series, uh, Super Rugby Pacific last year. People are talking and wanting to see that. Well, of course, Mick's got his plans. And uh, Dro says eh, at fullback, he's slowly coming into um, coming into his own form that uh, saw him uh, get picked up by the Reds, etc. Uh, previously. So, um, so the flying Fijians will be also keeping a close eye because... Number 10 for Fiji rugby in general at the moment is a bit of a uh, problem. So who do they push out there? I mean, uh, Frank's played uh, in the number 10 jersey in the, on the local scene in the past. And uh, he's, he's, he's someone who's, who's been able to do that. He's played out on the wing for the Rebels and his club in Europe when he was there for joining the Drua. So all these players are putting their hands up, not wanting to only impress in Super Rugby Pacific, but uh, also uh, trying to get that call up uh, by Simon Rewelui later this year for the Rugby World Cup clucking. Yeah, Hambosi, no longer there, uh, had the contract terminated and we went, oh my goodness, but all of a sudden these guys are just putting their hand up and I guess there's no surprise about that because uh, it has been a wonderful production line in Fiji has it outside backs, you know, they're, they're, they're just all over the place, if not for the Drua, certainly for all around the world. Namami, for example... Yeah. Yeah, 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 most definitely, Clark. You know, Yusef Masi, when he came back from the uh, with a stint in rugby league, everyone was thinking, you know, he got picked up by Drua. What is he made of? I mean, that guy has shown it on the field already. Uh, what he's capable of. Uh, Ravovo, I think he's not where he was last season, but slowly coming back to form once he's, uh, you know, fully ready to go and unleash like he did last year. He'll, he'll definitely be. But, you know, uh, with Hambosi, uh, Hambosi was the star performer of the whole comp last year. When he got let go by the by the Drua for disciplinary issues, there's a lot of outcry. People are thinking, you know, what next? He is he's the star man for Drua who's gone. Um, who's going to be scoring tries, etc. As you mentioned, the others have stepped up, but but the forwards, you got to give credit to forwards. And Mick did say that earlier this week as well in a press conference that the forwards have been sensational, and that that sort of sounds uh, a little bit out of the ordinary when you talk about Fijian rugby and the forward play being better at times than the backs. Yeah, indeed. Pete, um, I'd like to uh, ask you about your connections with uh, Pacifica players as well. Um, I mean, I I wanted to invite you on to to talk about the Reds a a little more in depth. We'll do that later because there's a great synergy between uh, Queensland rugby and um, the Pacific nations over the years but uh yeah rebels rupa uh now at the reds uh you know you, you've worked a lot with uh pacifica players what makes them tick oh look i've been really fortunate uh to develop some outstanding relationships with just some wonderful people right um and pacifica rugby has such an influence here in australia um you know it's often referred to the, the influence of pacifica rugby in new zealand but it's just a stark you know right here in australia and um, you know, w- one of the first people who, who I got to meet, um, you know, w- working down at the Rebels and develop a really strong relationship with was a guy called Sefania Navalu. And uh, I'm sure your listeners will be familiar with Sefer and his journey from, from Ovalau, um, you know, all the way over to Melbourne. First ever player to be signed by the Rebels uh, who was playing in the local Melbourne club rugby competition, the Jewish Shield. So he came over with a program called, called Island Breeze, which Wanga Barabalala was running in, in Melbourne at the time. He's now relocated to, to Harvey Bay with that program. But playing for Box Hill in the Jewish Shield, I managed to earn selection for the Melbourne Rising team in the NRC. Um, and about two weeks into training, the Melbourne Rebels coaching staff went, we've got to get this guy in a full-time program. He is unbelievable. Um, you know, and Seth has gone on to have a, a fantastic career, not only, uh, you know, representing the Rebels, the Reds and the Wallabies, but but over with Stade Francais, where he is now. And uh, with, the, you know, a little bit of better luck on the injury front, um, you know, he, he'd be a guy that, that we'd hear a lot more about. But but he was a wonderful athlete. And one of the really interesting things, uh, getting to know Sefa, um and his journey was, was just trying to understand how, um, how to adapt for a young Fijian man from a regional part of Fiji 
to come into a professional rugby program in a big city like Melbourne and all of a sudden, uh, you know, being given iPads to go and review all your training footage and your game footage and um, even some of the cultural differences between, uh, you know, Pacifica culture and, and perhaps Australian culture, things like looking down uh, when speaking with someone as a sign of respect and, and some of these things that were quite interesting for me to learn about. But I think, um, you know, certainly my time in Melbourne Got to know uh, Sefa, Alex Rocabaro, another Fijian international, of course. Radiki Samo spent some time down with us at the Rebels. Um, I got to see Kemu Valentini, who, of course, is now at the Drua, was on the fringes of that Melbourne Rebels squad, you know, some 10, nine years ago. Um, you know, played some preseason matches. His younger brother, uh, Bill Valentini, was very close to a breakthrough and unfortunately um, had a couple of injuries. And then, of course, the one that got away for Victorian rugby in, in Rob Valentini, who, who's been such a star at the Brumbies. Um, I fast forward my, to my time at Rupert and, you know, again, getting to know players at all of the Australian franchises and in the Australian Rugby Sevens programs as well, developing relationships with Samu Karevi, Elia Green, Nissi Nasirani, um, Henry Spate, you know, just wonderful, wonderful people who've had such a, an overwhelmingly positive impact on Australian rugby on and off the field. Um, and Greg, that takes me to now and, and four, you know, just awesome guys from, from Fijian backgrounds in the Red Squad at the moment in in Suli Vinavalu, Filippo Daugunu, Seru Uru and, uh, and Penny Ravi, who's come in and is the life of the party, just always has a smile on his face, always wants to give you a big slap of the hand and say hello. And besides the impact he's had on the field for the Queensland Reds, it's just been a beacon of energy, um, which is just so enjoyable around the club. I mean, I was lucky enough to, to spend some time uh, travelling with the Classic Wallabies group to Fiji about four years ago, and the Classic Wallabies played a game against Classic uh, Fijians in, um, in the capital, and just watching the atmosphere live and, and seeing, you know, guys like like uh, Sam Cordingly and, and Bo Robinson and, and Stephen Moore and these guys playing against these Pacific legends and, and the stands were just full and it was just, you know, a truly life-changing experience, something that, yeah, you know, there's no atmosphere like it. So in summary, I feel really, really blessed to have developed relationships with so many wonderful Fijian people and, and people from all over the Pacific and I'm certainly, you know, acutely aware of, what an overwhelmingly positive influence Fiji and rugby has had on Australian rugby. I think the inclusion of the Drua in, in Super W and Super Rugby is incredibly important. And, and I wish the Drua, you know, nothing but success and, and maybe a losing grand final against the Reds this year, if I may. But um, I also think that, that it's great, you know, and, and you see this, you know, I mentioned a Rob Valentini, you see this with the Rebels, they're 10 years old. They've got Victorian talent developed because of a new pathway that came into place who actually have gone on to have their success elsewhere be that a Rob Valentini be that a Hunter Paisami be that you know a Monte Ioani who went overseas and, and played for Italy and has now come back to Melbourne and I think to Indra's point earlier the Drua um, yes it'd be great to handpick all the best Fijian players all over the world and, and drop them into the Drua team um, but hopefully what we might see is, is an ability for for the Drua to continue to have a really nice balance of up and coming players developed through the pathways, getting opportunities to showcase their talents and not so much using the Drua as a stepping stone, not by any stretch, but, um, you know, I, I think it's really important that Australian rugby and New Zealand rugby continue to benefit from the influence of, of Fiji and the other Pacific islands, because it, it's just had such a positive impact and we're so grateful for what Fiji and rugby has done for us. And let's hope yes. World Rugby is also grateful for what the Fijians have done for the uh, for the world game. Um, well said, uh, Pete, and, and I can just feel that uh, you know that, that you are very um, very generous with your praise there, which is great. Um, uh, Indra, if Pete wants uh, to get back to Suva, he should probably get back there uh, for the Rebels double header. How, how's that shaping up? We're counting down. It's April one. It's not an April Fool's joke, Reba. Uh, Rebels versus the Drua, Super W, Super Rugby Pacific. Uh, tickets have been reduced. They really want to fill the stadium. And if Lautoka was any guide, I think they will. Yeah, most definitely. I, I think it's time for Suva uh, to show that support. We saw Suva last year when you were here, Clarkie, as well, when we played that game against the Highlanders. That was a one-off in Suva. And uh, this will be the first home game at, in, in Suva for this season. A double header. 
and it's, uh, you mentioned correctly, it's, it's, it's going to be fantastic because you get to see the defending champions of uh, Fiji and Super W. Now, the women ruggers have gone gone through a lot um, off, off and behind the scenes and uh, off the field since the World Cup and the success also in uh, Super W last year. There's a lot of accusations flying around. There's a lot of uh, talk about what the players went through. They've lost a number of their players. Um, they're trying to rebuild uh, with about seven or eight of the uh, women still around, and, you know, trying to get back that um, the winning culture into the side, trying to uh, redo the whole uh, the Fijiana culture that's, that's, uh, that was there last season when they made such a big impact during the, the uh, inaugural season. They are camping out in Singatoka. We were there yesterday. My team was there yesterday um, uh, talking to the girls. They are excited because they get to play on the same on the same day as the men for the first time ever as a curtain raiser at home, and 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 people are getting excited because when you have the rebels, a, a lot of people might look at the big guns and go like, you know, it's not the Brumbies or, or to to some extent the Reds or uh, Blues or the Crusaders, but this rebels outfit has shown us um, this season they just refuse to go away. They keep on, uh, you know. Despite a couple of losses under their belt, they keep on uh, putting up a grand show. They 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 worthy opposition. They've got a couple of wallabies or a few wallabies in their ranks, but at the end of the day, the Fijians just want the draw. Continue doing what they're doing, and uh, most possibly, as as Pete said, hopefully make the finals. Um, and these are sorts of games that they need to nail. The Drew needs to nail these games. You know, at home, get that at least the four points uh, on the points table. Uh, try and make the playoffs. And, you know, playoffs is another story. It's, it's uh, to be spoken of on a different day. But the people need to get behind them. Uh, you, you know, the Drew management has mentioned that we really have had big crowds, but not really sold out crowds. We're short by about 2,000, uh, if I'm not mistaken, for the Crusaders game, or 4,000 in the Crusaders game. Uh, we short by about 2,000 last year. We need the Fijians to come out there. I mean, we, it's kudos to every person who comes out every time there's a home game. We need other Fijians to come out, you know, feel those stands, feel, feel, feel the terraces and just get behind the drawer because that is the added power that gives these players um, that, that just that added boost to play in front of their families and friends, which was, which was just a dream in the past. Uh, it's become a reality. Pete's mentioned it correctly. We need this to keep on going. We need the people to keep on supporting the boys. And this is just that's uh, that's that's another another chapter for uh, Suva on April first. A double header. Great ticket prizes. Fantastic. You know, kudos to Drua um, uh, or the whole team there in Nandi for coming up with great ticket prizes that everyone can afford. That from you know uh, youngsters uh, to right up until the uh, golden oldies to enjoy a great afternoon of double header. Excitement is building, Clarky. I think more than that, if you can get a good result against the Highlanders this week, expecting uh, the Rebels match to be absolutely uh, fulfilling that uh, that uh, desire to have a sold-out stadium. Yeah, OK. Let's get to uh, week five shortly. But uh, Canes 34, Waratahs 17. Pete, a uh, brief summary of that. What do you think? Tars uh, were disappointed again with that uh, result. Yeah, I, I think yeah, the Canes uh, showing that they could be the real deal this year. Um, I know that they're one of those teams you always talk them up and, and perhaps they end up letting you down. But, you know, I saw it firsthand in Townsville in round one when, when we played them and, you know, they're very, very good on attack. Um, that Waratahs team has been really disrupted by injury and an in inability to have consistency in team selection. So, um, you know, the Tars have got a little bit of pain ahead of them on the injury front, um, but you wouldn't write them off yet. Uh, Indra, Chiefs uh, unbeaten on top of the table, 44-25 over the Rebels. What did you make of it? Yeah, the Chiefs look uh, look, look like a um, you know a solid bet to make. To, I mean, maybe give go all the way to the grand final. They they've just been fantastic this year. Um, you know, Crusaders have had um, uh, that shock loss against the Drua. The Blues have had two and two. The Chiefs are showing that they're the real deal this year, and it looks like um, you know it's going to be pretty tough uh, to take down those boys. Uh, you know, either at home or away. Pete, I know that the Blues were targeting their match against the Crusaders after losing the final last year. Uh, Crusaders won it in Auckland, 34 to 28, but the Blues dropped the ball over the line twice. So their own worst enemy, no doubt about that. Yeah, and, and look, I think it was probably the match of the season so far. If we look at the quality of the football on show and the intensity, um, I, I think those two teams off the back of last season deserve to be held as the benchmarks, even though, you know, there's, there's probably four or five teams in a chasing pack um, at the moment. 
I, I think the Blues, you know, that one will really sting for them. Uh, you know, it, it will be the one that got away a little bit. For the Crusaders, it was critical that they bounced back after that shock loss over in Fiji. And, um, you know, especially with all of the, uh, I, I guess, the the gossip around whether Scott Robertson was going to be offered the All Blacks coaching job. Um, you know, important for them to do their talking on the field. Um, so, yeah, a, a great game of footy, um, but the Blues will be stinging. Indeed. And the Highlanders, uh, Indra, they warmed up for uh, the uh, match against the Drua, 43-35 to 35 over the Western Force, and uh, the Highlanders were desperate for a win. Yeah, they needed that. Um, you know, I watched that game uh, you know, Sunday afternoon and showdown. Aaron Smith and the boys, you know, you could see the desperation of them. Even, uh, and, and the Force did come back with a couple of late tries, and I think they, they scored the last try in that match. But it sets them up really nicely for that match against the, 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 the Drew this week. So it's the Chiefs and the Brumbies unbeaten. The Chiefs are on top of the table on 19. Brumbies 17. Canes 14. Blues 11. Crusaders and Reds are on 10 points. Fiji and Drew are on 9. And the Force rounding out the top 8 on 8 points. So week 5, Friday and Crusaders and Brumbies. Pete, your tip? Over in Christchurch. Uh, well, I've, I've seen Australian teams winning Christchurch. Um, I think this Brumbies team, uh, you know, they're, they're going along very nicely. So I'm going to say Brumbies by three. What's your tip, uh, Indra? Crusaders or Brumbies? Yeah, I think the Crusaders have learned their lesson. and uh, That's stung in Lotuka. Uh, and with uh, Richie dictating play back in the 10, I'll just between 1 and 12 to the Cedars. I'm leaning with you, Pete. I'm going to lean towards the uh, the Brumbies as well because I think they just play, they're just they playing a, a good 80-minute uh, effort at the moment. And, um, you know, the Crusaders, well, uh, they got out of jail last week, let's just say that. The Tars and the Chiefs, this one's in Australia. So the Chiefs unbeaten, and this becomes a big one for the Tars, Pete. It does. Uh, every game is a big one at the moment for, for any of the teams, you know, probably kind of 12th to, to 6th. Um, that being said, I, I just can't see anyone beating the Chiefs at the moment in the form they're in. Sean Stevenson at fullback has been absolutely phenomenal. Uh, so I think the Chiefs will be too strong and, and they'll win by 10. And uh, what you, what's your tip, uh, Indra? A bit of Fijian influence in the Chiefs as well, let alone the yeah, Tars. Yeah. <laughs> One that got away, Peter Gasso Kula. He's been, he's been playing some good rugby, but yeah, Sean Stevenson, right now, you know, that number 15 All Blacks jumper might just already be having his name on it if they were to pick on form right now. Um, yeah, I think I think even though Nemani Nandolo is there with, in the Tars and trying to get them, I, I don't see the Tars being able to take down the Chiefs. So yeah, going with the Chiefs for this one. Uh, well, the Drua, uh, I'm, I'm going to, you know, obviously support the, the Fijian Drua when they take on the Highlanders on Saturday. We saw that they almost did the job against the Highlanders in Suva last year. Uh, this is just another opportunity for the, the Drua to just show their fans that uh, they can perform on the road. So let's hope they get the job done. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. I, I think going going down to the deep south of New Zealand, it's cold. It's frosty. Um, you know, it's, it's almost, if, if you have a look at the footage from Invercargill last weekend when the force were there, it's, it's like watching rugby from a couple of decades ago. So the Drew are going to have to adapt. But but I think Mick Byrne, you know, he's a very worldly man. He spent a lot of time in New Zealand. He will have circled this game in the calendar as, as one to target in, in the opening six weeks um, and one that, you know, a good away win can, can really build the confidence within the Drew. So I think they can do it. What do you think, Indra? Yeah, closed roof. Um, you know, uh, not not to worry too much about uh, the other elements such as rain, etc. That's been uh, pelting uh, Otago region this week. I think this is one that changes the um, away form as well for the Drua. They haven't been very lucky in terms of uh, playing their away games uh, from last season. I think at least by seven, Drua by seven. Good on you, Moana. They're at home taking on the the Hurricanes. Thoughts, Pete? Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that was their first ever win was against the Hurricanes last year. So um, I know the Hurricanes will be keen to uh, to restore parity on that front. Look, I, I, again, um, if you look at how strong the Hurricanes have been with ball in hand and, and unfortunately how many points Moana have conceded, it's hard to go past a, a relatively straightforward win here for, uh, for the Canes. 
Yeah, I think so as well. What do you reckon, Indra? Look, we all want the Moana Pacifica side to do well as well. I mean, uh, they are the Pacific brothers. And, uh, you know, as much as we do want them, I think I think the Canes with the likes of Kini Naholo also getting that, um, you know, break last week and showing the power that they have, Adi is back, etc. Too hard for Pacifica. Uh, a runaway Hurricanes victory for this one. And Pete, uh, this is interesting for you, your old team, the Rebels, up against your current team, the Reds, and that is in Melbourne, Saturday. Yeah, as I referenced earlier, this is a really important game for us here at the Reds. Um, you know, we we haven't won two in a row so far this season, um, and, and as we prepare to host the Crusaders in our next home game um, and the Brumbies the following week, you know, this is a really important stretch of matches which will have a significant impact on the season. The Rebels have been impressive, um, and perhaps without getting pay for, for how well they've done at certain times. But, you know, the loss of Reese Hodge um, is, is, is a big one for them. He, he plays such an important role in that back line, the ability to fill multiple positions, the calm head out there, um, and his leadership will be sorely lacked. So I think it'll be it'll be a really tight game. I, I think it'll be really physical, um, but, but I do fancy our Reds. Um, and also in the Super W doubleheader down there as well, I, I fancy our, our Reds women to get to make a winning start to the year and, and our Reds men to get it done in a, a tight one as well. What do you reckon, Indra? Yeah, I saw the Reds uh, last week and a couple of weeks before that. I think um, with uh, that number 10 depth that they have now with a youngster and a veteran, both combining well, I think dictating play, you know, it, it, I think the Reds will just have, have enough uh, to overcome the Rebels. Uh, the tight one. But the Reds to take that one up. Yeah, toss of the coin. Uh, yeah, possibly the the, the Reds because uh, they uh, were able to get the job done last week, got out of jail, and uh, they won't want another uh, last 20 minutes like um, we saw at Suncorp. And then it's the Blues hosting the force. Pete? Oh, the Blues have to win. It's as simple as that for a team of the calibre to be sitting two and two. Um, they've got no option but to get the win. Uh, for the force... They'll be galvanised by elements of what they were able to do in Invercargill. Yes, disappointed not to get the win, but, um, you know, again, demonstrate an ability to to score points and spending the two weeks in New Zealand as a group, particularly with a number of newcomers coming in this year, um, you know, will build that squad mentality within them. Um, you know, Simon Cron, we know that one of his um, you know, kind of, uh, I, I guess, characteristics as a head coach is his ability to bring a group together and, no doubt, uh, being a Kiwi, a transplanted Kiwi himself, he will have had you know the week planned out you know really really tightly in terms of the travel from Invercargill to Auckland and, and what happens in between. Um, I think this will be tighter than people suspect. I, I do think the Blues will get it done, just, um, but I wouldn't be riding off the force. Just go back uh, one as well. Uh, I forgot to mention that uh, Seth Fargasi has uh, copped a three-match suspension, so more problems uh, as far as the, the, the depth goes in that uh, Queensland Reds uh, pack a, as well. Uh, so, so Indra, uh, Blues for you? Yeah, I think I think the Blues, uh, as Pete mentioned correctly, um, they they were talking about this being their year after having played the final last year against the Crusaders and losing. They they had many a time scored their peaks a year too early to play in the final last year, and they've learned a lot. But they haven't really played the way they did last season. We haven't seen that. But with the likes of Mark Talea, who's uh, also, just like Sean Stevenson, putting his hands up and wanting that All Blacks jumper, I think the Blues uh, will settle in it and uh, maybe run away with this one in the second half. But the Force um, will, will definitely put up a good show. Manasa Mateli, another Fijian running around for the Force at the moment, um, might have something to say about that, having some experience in New Zealand. But yeah, Blues in this one. Okay, well, that's uh, Super W Pacific. Super, sorry, that's Super Rugby Pacific. Super W starts Saturday. Fijiana Drua, as Indra mentioned before, taking on the Brumbies women in Nandy at 1.30 p.m. So hopefully a big crowd gets out to King Charles Park. Uh, other games, Tars in force on Friday and the Rebels and the Reds on Saturday. Six Nations, quickly, Ireland Grand Slam champions finishing on 27 points. Can the uh, Irish finally make the semis at a Rugby World Cup? They finish seven points ahead of second place, France. What do you reckon of, uh, about Ireland, Pete? Well, look, they've demonstrated um, yeah, yet again that, that they have an ability to adjust when things don't go to their plan, saying Josh Vanderfleer 
you know, throwing the line out and Healy packing at hooker and and this sort of thing. And obviously, you know, seeing uh, seeing Mac Hansen uh, having another fantastic tournament at the back is uh, is slightly hard to watch as an Aussie, but. Look, they've been brilliant. Um, it's a tough side of the draw for them, as we know, with the Rugby World Cup and the way that the pools have, have worked themselves out. So you can't, unfortunately for the Irish, you can't pencil in a semi-final. Uh, they're going to have to beat some very good teams to make sure they get there, but they're going to go in giving themselves, you know, as we said four years ago, probably their, their best ever platform to succeed, and it's up to them whether they grab it or not. And does the Six Nations also, you know, have, have a... Uh you know, high profile in the, the islands as well, Indra? Oh, most definitely. I think um, uh, while the Irish uh, looked uh, very good, or they do look very good as one of the top bets for the World Cup, I think Toby Faletau uh, out of Tonga playing for Wales, uh, you know, definitely gets some backing. The Twilangi boys who've uh, run out for England and um, Dokkane Singer was there as well uh, for for, for uh, England in, in terms of uh, having a, a couple of our Fijian boys running around there. And, you know, I think the Irish Bandiaki, uh, a lot of people have followed him during his days in New Zealand rugby, um, uh, playing there for the Irish as well. So, uh, yeah, it does It does um, uh, a lot of people. And I think a lot of uh, neutrals in Fiji uh, usually back France because of the T14 uh, that got uh, well, 100, maybe just a little bit over 100 Fijians featuring in uh, T14 and uh, Pro D2. Okay, yeah, well, they're everywhere, aren't they, the Fijians? We've already mentioned that. Uh, Scott Robertson, All Black coach from 2024. Uh, as I tweeted, I'm not sure about the, the timing of it. I don't know, you know, how they can uh, have a win-win with that with the timing. But, um, you know, obviously, he, he's won six Super Rugby titles in, in, in a row. Yes, he's had the talent to work with, but you still have to win the games. Uh, there is talk that maybe there are going to be three uh, coaching positions available in New Zealand. Uh, Pete, first of all, Leon McDonald uh, tipped to to join uh, Razor. Jason Holland from the Hurricanes tipped to join Razor. Jason Ryan left uh, the Crusaders uh, to, to join the current coaching staff and he's likely to stay on as forwards coach. So I just wonder if that opens up a spot for a, maybe a, a Dave Rennie, former Wallaby coach, or a Vern Cotter, former Flying Fijians coach. But interesting, isn't it, uh, that they, they made that decision now rather than after the Rugby World Cup. Yeah, fascinating. And, and look, the proof will be in the pudding. It's really easy to sit here and, and pick holes in, uh, you know, what it means for Ian Foster. And then the reality is that um, they've identified Scott Robertson. Well, I mean, Blind Freddie could identify his coaching capabilities, right? But, um, you know, they've identified him as the, the heir apparent and they've acted fast to ensure that they don't, miss out on him uh you know with his opportunity to go elsewhere we know he spent time playing in Perpignan when he was uh you know, when he was a player and that he speaks French and he's, he's talked about wanting to coach abroad and while there aren't international positions available at the moment um you know I think the fear for New Zealand rugby would have been that you know similar to a Warren Gatland 15 years ago he goes overseas and they never get to utilize him at his best and and they've acted fast look for me um and, and I, I say this with absolute respect to the individuals involved. I prefer the way that Rugby Australia have handled it in terms of, of identifying somebody and you know being cognizant of, of his you know limited or pe pending availability and and acting fast to bring Eddie Jones in straight away. I, I think New Zealand Rugby could have justified making that same decision maybe four or five months ago. Um, it's a bizarre situation we're in. If Ian Foster goes on and wins the Rugby World Cup with New Zealand. Um, you know, despite what, what appear to be pretty frosty relations with New Zealand rugby now, um, yeah, he's going to rightfully be able to say, what a shame, I'm, you know, you made the wrong call and I should have been kept on. So I, th I think, yes, on the one hand, a tick, good to, to take decisive action and identify and secure your, your primary target. Um, but I think the timing's off and I think, uh, you know, you had to bring him in straight away. Indeed. Um Indra, uh, w judging by what we saw at Lautoka, Scott Robertson is, is, you know, bigger than some of the players in the Crusaders as far as the fans go. He was mobbed everywhere he went. So um, I, I guess it'll be a popular decision uh, in Fiji to see that uh, Razor Robertson has finally been given the all-black job from 2024. Yeah, I think it will bring smiles to Fiji Rugby Union and Clarkey because they want him as a technical advisor for this year's Rugby World Cup. I mean, the offer is still on the table the last we spoke to Fiji Rugby Union um, a couple of days ago. Uh, so, you know, 
they'll be delighted. And I, I agree with Pete. It should have uh, happened a couple of a few months ago when New Zealand rugby was on the down. There's a lot of talk about um, uh, Razor being appointed, but he's there now. And you mentioned about uh, availability of Joe. Joe Schmitz also comes into the contention for possibly the Blues uh, head coach role next year. We'll see about that. But uh, the, the the big question at the moment with Fiji rugby, if you're relating it to uh, Reza, is will he make himself available post Super Rugby Pacific to help out uh, with the Flying Fijians for this year's World Cup before he settles in uh, with the All Blacks for next season? Um, I'd like that to happen, but uh, I don't think it will happen. <laughs> but uh, well, who, who knows? Uh, Pete, the, the Drua, Fijian Drua, two years old, not even two years old. Uh, Queensland Rugby this year celebrating 140 years. Um, we, we found out that they actually played their first game against New South Wales um, and won it um, way back when at uh, Eagle Farm Racecourse. There was no Bellymore in those days either, but gee, what, what a wonderful milestone for uh, Queensland Rugby. And you've got some big celebrations happening, I know. Yeah, it's really special. Um, you know, it, it provides another opportunity. And this is something, I mean, I've only been at Queensland Rugby 12 months, but I've always noticed, um, you know, from afar that Queensland Rugby celebrates its heritage and its traditions, you know, really, really well. Um, and, and this year being the 140th year, um, you know, all of our playing apparel for our, our men's and women's teams has a special celebrating 140-year logo um, on, on the hip and on the, you know, the back, um, on the neck as well. Um, you know, it, it's been an opportunity to go back to our roots with Canterbury, who were our apparel provider, um, not 140 years ago, but 50, 60 years ago. So to team back up with with Canterbury has been been a really special way to celebrate and release some, you know, some limited edition vintage uh, apparel to celebrate. Um, but the most important thing, obviously, is the redevelopment of Ballymore. Um, so we're really excited. The, the countdown timer is well and truly on to move into the National Rugby Training Centre That'll be a permanent home for women's rugby in Australia, the first ever one, as well as the home of, of the Queensland Rugby Union, the Queensland Reds, Super Rugby, Super W and Academy teams. Um, it's going to be a wonderful facility from a high performance aspect um, and, and the broader precinct, you know, with what we're going to be able to do with that precinct and, and some of the plans in place with that that 10 year pathway to the Olympic Games here in Brisbane in 2032 and, and the capability to host Olympic Games hockey at the venue. Um, and to be able to bring other sports in, you know, for a, you know, a custom, you know, currently eight, but but hopefully, you know, with the redevelopment of the Eastern stand up to kind of fifteen to 18,000 capacity stadium for rectangular sport, men's and women's, a, a, a real hub so close to the CBD. Um, it, yeah, I, I'd be lying if I didn't say all of this rolling out was a real key consideration for me when I was given the opportunity to join the QRU and, uh, it, it's about as exciting a time as there's been. Yeah, if you look with Women's World Cup, Rugby World Cup, British and Irish Lions on the on the horizon as well, it's an incredibly exciting time to be involved in sport here in Queensland. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, I can feel the excitement building. And um, just in conclusion, uh, Indra, what's happening at FBC? What's making headlines in in, uh, in rugby? And congratulations on what you're doing. You, you and your team are doing a great job. Uh, you know, bringing the Fijian Drua and Fijiana Drua, you know, to the to the back pages, which is great. Yeah, most definitely. I think um, uh, you know the the guys here have been excited every week, shooting for the uh, you know the Super Rugby games and uh, beaming it out live, of course, uh, through uh, great commentary here led by yourself, Clarky. And I think this week with the women's. Uh, Women's comp getting underway. You know, the Brumbies at 1 o'clock under the heat of 90. They they would have preferred not to be out there. But, that that you know, if it's the heat that we have been experiencing. Uh, that's going to be a massive test for the Brumbies women. But, uh, yeah, I think I think all of this week, just quickly before we uh, wrap it up, I think I stick my head out and say this. Uh, since the Drua has started performing uh, from last year and now into this year, and the Sevens not really performing, you know, the Drua have gained massive support uh and it's 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 only going to grow so uh, you know thanks to the players and everyone involved with that and uh, making making the drew a success story so far clucky yeah well thank you to fbc i look forward to uh, catching up with uh, your team at uh, suva for the double header on uh, april 1 good luck to the uh, drua and uh, fijiana drua this uh, weekend good luck to the reds as well pete thanks very much for your time really appreciate it 
And uh, Indra, thank you very much as well. And to everyone else for, for watching, that's it for this week. We'll be back same time next week. And uh, hopefully yeah, we'll be talking about uh, another great round of Super Rugby Pacific and uh, Super W. I'm Greg Clark. Bye for now. Bye. Bye.